Let's, uh, let's come to order. We won't start the meeting yet, but let's come to order. Before we start our meeting tonight, we're going to do the pledge. And we've got Reverend Jim Orr with us. He's going to. Can't hear me? Not well. Not well. Mm -hmm. I can hear you. How's that? Can you hear me now? Hey. You know what to say? I'm telling you. Can you hear me now? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Before we start the meeting tonight, we're going to have a uh, invocation given by Reverend Jim Orr tonight. And we're going to have the pledge, and that's going to be led by Connie Rich. So, Councilman Rich, excuse me. All stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. May we bow our heads in prayer. Dear God, on this cold winter's evening, as we prayerfully focus upon your presence, may we all ask ourselves a very simple question, but a question with countless answers. What's in a name? May we ask the question, what's in the name of Connorsville? We find in this name a very rich past, we think of the Whitewater Canal. We think of our community being called Little Detroit with the production of automobiles. We think of a man named Brace Beamer, who was the first Lone Ranger on radio. We think of having the first high school band in the country. We ask the question in relationship, what is Connersville today? Honestly, we face economic problems. We face a drug problem. We need to work together to improve our self-image. We ask this question in relationship to the future. The answer to this question largely is to be found in this room and in all of the citizens of our community that we're to work together selflessly to help to build our community economically and spiritually. To this end, we lift these words to you in prayer, in your Son's name. Amen. 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 Call the meeting to order. This being our regular council meeting, we will have a roll call. Councilwoman Risch. Present. Councilman Weber. Present. Councilman Shulman? Present. Councilman Nobby? Present. Councilwoman Montgomery? Present. Councilman Creech? Present. Councilwoman Seiler? But the record show that six of the seven council people are here. We have a quorum and we can do business. I ask <coughs> that each one of you would turn your cell phone on silent or vibrate or off, whichever you'd like to, so we don't interrupt anybody when they're speaking. And uh, I welcome you here tonight, Reverend Orr. You did a fantastic job in a thumbnail sketch you described our community that was the purpose uh, you kind of left out the middle but that's okay <laughs> uh, it was a it was a good description we ought to always think positive like that and and end positive like you did thank you um, tonight being our regular meeting for February the 17th we will ask that uh, we have the reading of the minutes I'd like to pass the meeting to present. Second. A motion and a second that we accept the minutes as they were sent out to the council. Are there any additions or corrections? None appearing, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion is carried. <coughs> Thank you. Under new business tonight, we are going to have a public hearing. I want to give you a little history about this public hearing. Some years ago, I asked the council if they would consider forming a historic preservation committee. And uh, they graciously gave us permission to move forward with the historic preservation committee. And uh, that committee has now been working, I think, uh, three or four years. I lose track of time. Uh, they have done a great job. They have uh, done work at the park, the cemetery, and now they're trying to preserve some uh, buildings downtown. 
I commend them because it takes a lot of work, it takes a lot of effort, and it takes leadership. And I'm here tonight to introduce to you Donna Scott, if you'll come forward. Donna Scott is a lifelong resident of Connersville. She has always had the interest of this community at heart. She's worked on many, many things. She's famous because she was president of the state women's home ec group. Did I get it right? Extension homemakers, but I'll take any title you want to give me. Okay. Thank you. She leads this group, and I'm going to let her introduce her group. And then after you're done introducing your group, I'll call the public hearing to order. If you go ahead and introduce your group. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If you remain standing when she introduces you. Um, I'd like to first introduce those that are here. Not all of our, we have nine voting members. Um, they are Katrina Bailey, John Bolander, Rick Lemon, Sharon McQueen, Jim Orr, Donna Schroeder, Rebecca St. Clair, Pat Suman, and myself. And then our ex officio members are Mayor Urban and Melissa Callahan. Joe Frost, who is with the Indiana Landmarks, and Susanna Johnson. Thank you so much. With that, hold on, Ms. Okay. I'm going to call a public hearing for the purpose of the nomination for the uh, historic downtown. And now I'll let you introduce our guest. All right. Well, first of all, I want to just say a brief moment that I want everyone on the council and in the listening audience to know that this project <coughs> involves absolutely no taxpayer funds. Uh, this year, this time last year, we came before the Board of Works and requested an amount from the remaining bicentennial funds. And we were given that amount. And with that, we hired a gentleman who is far more expert than any of the commission to uh, prepare uh, the application to go for the uh, National Register. So um, we felt like that we were justified in asking for the Bicentennial Funds since if you think about it, the mission statement of the Bicentennial was to honor our past, celebrate our present, and welcome the future. So, and I think by making our downtown area um, on the National Register, it helps us in many forms. And uh, so we felt quite comfortable in using the funds for that. So I'd like to introduce John Werner. He's a research historian. He resides in Indianapolis. He has managed nearly 40 successful National Register nominations. It's been a pleasure to work with, and all of our commission feels like we've really been fortunate to find him among our applicants. And uh, with that, I'll let John take over and give you his brief presentation on what we propose. Thank you. John? I hope you up to that. <laughs> I may have to turn my back to you just a little bit, so if you don't mind. I'm used to it. Okay. Um, <laughs> Okay. Uh, as Donna mentioned, what what the committee and commission sought to do was to get the downtown portion of Connersville, i.e., the oldest section of Connersville, on the National <coughs> Register. And the uh, the Act of 1966 set up a number of programs. One of them having been the uh, uh, National Register of Historic Places. And you can see in if in the small print. Uh, it's the official list of districts and, and houses and uh, buildings and sites that are considered worthy of uh, preservation. At the federal level, National Park Service monitors a program and, and makes all final decisions on it. And in Indiana, it's the Indiana Department of Natural Resources. And those are the folks I work with mostly when I'm working up the application and dealing with questions they may have. Um, the process in preparing the nomination starts out basically with what do we got, what do we have to work with. Um, once I've got that done, I send it to the uh, Indiana uh, Board of Natural Resources. It's reviewed and approved by them. Uh, 
via the Indiana State Review Board. Once the Indiana State Review Board had said, okay, it's good, and they're going to send it to the, to the uh, National Park Service, very seldom does it come back no. So once we get to that point and, and to get approval at the state level, I feel real comfortable we won't have any difficulty at all. <clears throat> okay, define, first the off, you have to define the boundaries of the district. And I'm just going to let you read this, and then we'll get into the details. If you have a question about anything, please ask it, and I'll try to handle whatever you might have. The form is about a, anywhere from a 25 to 30 page by the time you finish writing the different statements and that sort of thing. So it's a lengthy process and typically government uh, driven. I guess I shouldn't say that. You know what I mean? Uh, well, that's okay. We realize. <laughs> you got to do all the I's and the T's to get that done. Okay. This the boundary is marked generally here in red. If you can see that, now let me explain that. On the, this is the west side to the left. That's up Grand Avenue to 8th Street, along the southern uh, curb of 8th Street over to Eastern, south on Eastern to, there's an alley between 3rd and East 3rd and 4th Street, which picks up a couple of the older houses, two I'm going to show you here in a minute. And, and then it came back up and then closed it out on uh, West 4th Street, right near the county courthouse. And... Um, and that, the good thing about this is it incorporates some of the very oldest, if you will, land in the neighborhood, and it's in our district, and it was a strong uh, and a viable point that I tried to make in there. It doesn't happen very often when you're, when you're doing these sorts of things. The historic themes that I developed was ex exploration settlement. I think that's obvious. Architecture, there are really some good examples in the downtown district of various uh, periods of architectural history in the United States, starting all the way back in, in about 1843 when you look at the uh, canal headquarters down on 4th Street. Transportation, I think that's obvious to everybody. It started with a trail from Muncie that the Indians and John Connor used, it went to the canal, it went to railroads, and then it went to uh, Connorsville's involvement in the motor transport uh, history of the United States, in, in the state and the United States, and the things that uh, uh, that they built and made in this community uh, and went all over the world with. Uh, and then industry kind of clumps all of that together. So we had four real strong historic themes. These two houses uh, were in that little dogleg I had to the south east corner of the district. I want to pick those up because they're an excellent example of 1850s um, architecture, very good integrity. Integrity, by what I mean is if you went back to 19, excuse me, 1860, with the exception of a few minor things on those buildings, you'd be looking at the same buildings. So the integrity of those buildings is, is excellent. And uh, uh, there's a couple more I'm going to show you here in a second. Here's another one which, uh, when you look at, you go, whoa, wait a minute, okay. It's a nice building, but it also has great integrity because when you look at each one of those segments in the first, uh, as you go along the first floor, and are separated by cast iron pilasters, every one of those was a storefront, or a, or a, 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 a billiard hall, or a restaurant, and I'm going to show you in just a second. If you look very carefully down at the left on the small, I'm, I, I have to apologize. They say never apologize, but I have to in this case. On the Smallest on the left hand side, that was the Mecca uh, Cafe, and that was included in that building. That was one of the back in the 1890s, uh, 1900, 1910 time frame. So that building has great integrity. It, a lot of people go by and go, eh, yeah, no, but <laughs> no, there would be people who say that, but it has it. These are, I call the Three Sisters over on Eastern. I love these houses. They were all built right around 1900, roughly, because they were. It was something else in 19, uh, 1896 fire insurance map, and the next one showed these three side by side. Slap paint on them, clean them up a little bit. They're gorgeous. They've got all of the the uh, architectural elements of the time and the period, and there have been very minor changes to them. You all recognize this little house. This is this was for many many years a. Uh, office and I may be home. I couldn't quite separate that from the from the history of a number of doctors in town. 
and it's still a great example of uh, Tudor architecture from the 1920s, late early 1930s. Again, great uh, integrity. The windows are the same, the doors are the same. This is a non-contributing structure, which is not in Connersville, okay, I'll tell you right now. But you can see by looking at this, what when you start looking at buildings and trying to figure out what happened to them, why that would be non-contributing. I never quite figured out whether this was a stone building with a gable built on top of it, or a gable building with a stone building surrounding it. I never could quite figure out who was first on that deal, but that's non-contributing. So that kind of answers your question on what, when I my first survey through a district, I'm looking for these sorts of things because we have to be careful about um, the proportion of contributing and non-contributing. Periodic significance, is, I think, is fairly explanatory. 1813, everybody knows what that is. 1965 is normally, it's the 50 year from the year that you're putting it in back up to give you a certain period of time. The, a, a basic principle is in order to be in a national register, uh, even in a district, it has to be 50 years or older to qualify, the building itself. Uh, there are 66 contributing, 23 non-contributing, and then plus, uh, I think you know this, but there are two national register properties already in town. That's the uh, canal headquarters and also the county courthouse. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, it has a, a, some great examples of period architectural styles. Which, which is another real strong point. And that's about all I have to say. That's a quick down and dirty, but I'll be glad to <coughs> discuss any questions you have with it. John? Yes. Stress the fact that if this goes through, people own property or not handcuffed is what they Okay. I, you know, yeah, bring that up. <laughs> okay. One of the questions I always get when I go somewhere, but thank you, really, uh, for bringing that up is what's this going to mean to my property? I own property in that district. Now what, what's people going to stop me from doing? Absolutely nothing. It's your property. What this does, however, protect that property from somebody coming in and driving a highway through it without the federal government, if they're involved in it and their money is involved in it, without them making the case that this has to happen. So there's a protection given to properties within that district uh, by virtue of the fact it's on a national register. It would be real difficult for eminent domain to. Yeah, but but the proviso is if they're going to use federal funds, no matter at what level, it could be at, at tribal level or anywhere else. If they're using federal funds, it has to go through a process called a 106 evaluation, which is a whole nother animal, <clears throat> a long detailed investigation. But yes, but it does afford protection. Um, the other thing. And there, I can't quantify this because I've never been able to find it written down. One of the purposes of having a district is to build up community awareness of what they have, in this case, Connersville, the community here, what they have there on the ground and what to do to protect it and also to bring it back to life and in the long run add property values. I can't tell you it's going to make property values go up 20%. It, I, I'd be lying if I did. But it gives that aura of we're in a historic district, let's think what we're doing first, as opposed to just coming in and knocking something down or whatever. Um, that's it. Oh, I'm sorry. Are there funds available, grants available to people living in those districts to bring those properties yeah, back? Yeah, once, once, okay, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, once it's in the district and, and, it, and the district's been approved, there are tax benefits to historic preservation of your properties at state and at federal level. I'm not going to get into that because I don't keep up with the regs on that, but there's a guy named Dave Duvall down at, the, he is the state tax guy, okay? And he's at the uh, <coughs> Indiana uh, National uh, Resources, the uh, state resource, I'm sorry, okay? And he could explain it if you want. Can't really do anything right now until we get it all on the, get it on the National Register itself. But yes, there are some funds available. It's more in the form of tax breaks and things like that rather than they're going to walk in and give you a check. Okay, but hey, you know, that'll help out somewhere along the line if you're interested in doing that. So basically, it's just to provide our community with an area 
that is protected. Yes. It doesn't. Doesn't stop you from doing anything. Right. Okay. What what it does is again, as I, I said, and I've tried. Excuse my back, but. Um, it raises the image of the community to the point that people start to think this is a historic district. Before we do something to the historic district, what does it mean? What's it going to mean to my property? And hopefully, people that own property in that district are going to think like that. Gee whiz, you know, what should I do? Have, have you seen other communities that have been successful? Oh, yeah. In terms of turning those properties around so that they yeah. are not you, just. Well, yes, I have. Today, but better? Yeah, I have. But it's strictly on an individual basis. So no, nobody holding the gun to anybody's head. But I have seen that. I've gone back to look at districts. I looked at one district where it, it, it looked like it was a reversal. I never should have gone back there because it depressed me. But people had changed buildings out and that sort of thing. And so they can do. But as far as I was concerned, they threatened the, the, the integrity of the district itself. But yeah. Um, what well, happens ahead. if someone buys a house over that this doesn't, particular area, doesn't, and it is, it needs to be torn down. Can you tear it down? Are you, if you buy the house in the district and it's your property, you can do whatever you want with it. As I've told people facetiously, I hope, if, if you're in a district and that's your house or you want to put that, you want to burn it down the day after it's approved, have at it. Well, you, can't, you, can't, it you can't burn it down. The fire chief's here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I didn't mean it. But you know what I mean. Yeah. It's yours. It belongs to you. Yeah. Go ahead. Am I correct in saying that Connorsville is the largest community in the state that does not have historic? I thought somewhere. I Boy, it's, it it may well be. I, you know, I've never pulled the pulled the area, but I've done forty of these in probably twenty district, twenty five districts in a lot of towns, some the size of Connorsville, Kokomo, places like that. And I saw changes in Kokomo, as a matter of fact, when I went back. And it looked like people were sprucing the places up, painting them. People were coming in and buying the properties. And gentrify, gentrifies, I don't like that word, but bringing it back up to snow. I may be putting my foot in my mouth, but I thought maybe through Indiana Landmark staff, I was told. It, it, it could be. This it, is, yeah. that's, that's their business. They get into the bean counting business of it, and they're probably right. But this, this will put Connersville on the map in the register, and that's what we really want to do in the long run. This is a public hearing, and I encourage you all to ask questions. That's what this is all about tonight. If this uh, council will get to vote on this just a little bit. You need to ask questions and give your council uh, an idea how you feel about it. Okay. All of you, ask. Uh, Anybody? It's a public hearing for you. That's all I have? Really, all, I have. All I have. You must have done a good job. I think you're wrong on one thing, though. I think What's Elmhurst that? is on historic. Uh, I was talking about strictly in downtown, but yeah, uh, yeah. Elmhurst is. Strictly downtown. Is on the national. Not county, right, not county-wise. I didn't get into that. Uh, John, yeah. Also, uh, the original boundaries are set, but there would be no problem in the future of expanding. You've got to have a lot of ammunition to expand, okay. just like you have to have a lot of ammunition to reduce. And when you start reducing, if you ever want to do that or anything happens within the district, you're putting your percentages into question and you're going to have somebody looking hard at it. And they'll take properties or districts off of, they did that in Chicago with that uh, football stadium up there. Okay. Remember they changed it all out and they said, you can't do that. You know, you, you can, but you can't stay on it. And they did, and they took them off. The only thing outside the boundary would be Gary Weber's office, which to me is a would be an excellent uh, prospect to put. Of course, that's outside the, yeah. the boundary. You can put individual buildings on them. Oh, yeah. absolutely. You yeah. put individual buildings. There's no question about that. I'm saying as, as far as within the boundaries of the district okay. itself. Sorry, I misunderstood. If Gary, yeah. Gary gives us 50000 we'll get that on <laughs> or write a check. <laughs> we're in for check. Okay. Anybody? I remind you, we're in a public hearing. That's what this is for. Ask your questions. Uh, we don't want people to get out on the street tomorrow and say, well, we didn't understand it. We, we, we don't like this because tonight's the night we have this public hearing so you can listen, understand it all. Any comments? We've got a lady behind you, John. What about the yeah. park? 
No. It's there's, a, no there's no park in there now. Now, if you if you want to do the park as a as a separate issue, you could probably do that. It, we had this discussion with the commission at the beginning of trying to pick up various properties out and around the corner. You really get into dicey business when you do that because you wind up with a lot of little dog legs, and then I got to justify that somehow. And so, and a lot of times you can't do that. Uh, the firehouse up at uh, off of Grand is that what I'm thinking? I think we thought about trying hose to do that. Hose house. Hose house. house. Firehouse. Hose house. Hose yeah. Uh, and there were two or three other properties around it. We thought, you know, might. But the more I started sketching it out and looking, I really didn't recommend doing it. The park and the cemetery are historic right. districts. Yes, yeah. And they've already been declared a historic okay. district, which is a little different. Right. It has a little bit more restrictive to it. You can't do a lot in those districts uh, without getting written permission. Uh, we're thinking about putting an electric sign in the park, and I just applied to Donna's group for permission. What's it called, Donna? What's the, a non? Certificate of appropriate. Right. C c a certificate of appropriate is because it doesn't conform, but it's needed there because we're still using the park. But uh, but those two, the, c the city cemetery and the park, has already been declared. Not what we're trying to do here, but uh, it's a historic district. I just did a cemetery out in, uh, I'm in the process of doing a cemetery out at Greencastle. It's taken a long while to get it done, but it's a, uh, you get into, if you look ever think about the cemetery as a district, and that's how I wrote it, you have to be really strong and be able to make sure that that's different from every other cemetery that's out in Indiana or wherever. Um, and that in this case, they have a, a large uh, statue to Civil War soldiers that really is a one of a kind. For a long time, we thought that uh, Caleb Smith was buried at City Cemetery, who was Secretary of the Interior under Lincoln. Right. Oh, we probably yeah. could have got that done, but we found out some years ago that he's not really buried there. Mm -hmm. and, and that's where you get into problems, because records a lot of times are really sketchy for that sort of thing. Anybody? Dick Questions. Okay, we'll turn it over to council here in just a minute. Rick had a question. Rick, Rick. Okay, I don't want to mention. I told Donna, we're. It, this is a two-part process for me. Is there's two, uh, two reviews: a technical review, and then a substantive review. The technical review for this project has been done. I got the letter two days ago. So we're through step one. Now I gotta wait, and here we'll get into the time frame. Now I have to wait anywhere at the rate it's been going, um, 12 to 14 months, to wait for them to come back to me after they've looked at it, to, to correct or answer questions they may have, and then send that back in. And, and so far it's taken a terrible time, and, and uh, I, get, I get upset about this, I won't do that. And then it has to go wait for another quarter that they have the boards at the state review board once a quarter. So you start adding this all up, and we could be looking at 18 months to two years to get final chop on it, and it's off to Washington, D.C. So, and I told Donna, just, you know, we just have to have patience with it. How long in Washington? Four weeks, five weeks. They rubber stamp it, basically. Because okay. once it's done with the board here, they just don't turn it back. I will say that Indiana does a heck of a job in sending their nominations in. So uh, National Park Service just basically stamps them and sends them home. And they'll send a letter to them, and then y'all will get you will get a letter from um, natural resources folks saying you've been entered on the National Register and give you a specific date. And I'll, this is not the end of my involvement with this by long shot. I, you know, because I'll be bugging them, calling them, and stuff like that. But, We'll, uh, we've got to get through the substantive review, and that's the big that's the big one next. So I don't know if that answers your question because it's kind of wishy-washy. I, you know, they could call it tomorrow and say we're ready to go. I mean, I just never know what they're going to do. Hate to blame them, but nobody else to blame. No other questions tonight. None at all. John, stay there. Cause oh. Now the council gets to pick up. <coughs> okay. We better close this public hearing if there's nobody else wants to speak. Okay.
public hearing is closed. Uh, council, it's up to you now. I have a question about sure. the borders on this. If I understood right, it was the alley between 3rd and 4th on the south. Right. Between Eastern oh. and Central or... And, and, and yes, and, and Central. And then when you get up where there's Grand, you, um, it, Grand, it, it goes on Grand up to 9th Street? 8th Street. 8th, okay. And then it goes back to Eastern. My question is, is it only the west side of Eastern and only the yes. east side of Grand? It's, it's the west side of Eastern and the east side of Grand. Because those were the only buildings I had left. I've got one building up there which is an uh, automobile dealer that's been there any there long period of time at all and had a building that would re really register within the 50, over than 50 years. Uh, Reedman? Right. Mm -hmm. Reedman? Um, all those other ones are, are new buildings. And, and you got the big bank that takes up that whole block. Uh, that, and I really felt bad about that. I was curious, on the um, east side of Eastern, Right there behind Wendy's, there's that big old brick house, and I didn't mm -hmm. know if it, you know, just curious. That was one, of, we talked about the whole periphery of that, of the district, in regards to separate properties that were outside <laughs> mm -hmm. of the boundaries that, that we was, talked about. Yeah, okay. But that was one of them, and the Hose House, and the, there's another one around here somewhere. Um, I just knew it was just on the other yeah, side and of it's the right on the from edge, the, Those three sisters or whatever. Right. Just. Yes. It's a lovely house, but I... I just don't like doing that because it asks. Because you'd have to just go that's like right. this. That's right. Start doing a jigsaw. Okay. Just curious. No, that's fine. I'm. Anybody? Go ahead, council. Any questions? Mm -hmm. well, we will do this then is by resolution. Somebody wants to make a motion. By resolution, resolution we will uh, endorse what the Historic Preservation Committee has uh, begun. I'll make that motion. Second. Okay. Motion's made by Connie that we endorse the uh, work of the mission. That's what you need. And uh, any further questions? None appearing. We'll have a roll call vote. Councilwoman Risch? Yes. Councilman Weber? Yes. Councilman Schommel? Yes. Councilman Nobby? Yes. Councilwoman Montgomery? Yes. Councilman Creech? Yes. You have passed that six to zero. Uh, resolution passes, gone. I need you to write a resolution that uh, we might sign to uh, give to the Historic Preservation Committee. All right. Okay. Is there anything else you need from us, John? No, sir. I, I really enjoyed presenting this, and I hope you understand what we're trying to accomplish with this. So in the long run. Thank, Thank you very you. much for your Thank time. You. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Moving on, we have resolution 2015-5, 2015-06, 2015-07. These are all reimbursements. I'd like to take all of them at one time. Would you like a motion on that, Harold? Yes. I would like to make a motion that we pass those uh, four resolutions. Second. A motion and a second that we pass all these resolutions. For you people who are not familiar with this, this is receiving money back. It's usually not a tough time to do. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Pending ordinance. Uh, this is a ordinance that requires a public hearing. Uh, $2,000 for the storm rally. Uh, the council gave permission at the last meeting to advertise for a public hearing to take $2,000 from the riverboat fund and put into storm. Uh, I heard some testimony on storm today. I attended a meeting and I heard some great testimony on storm. Uh, I think that uh, in doing that, the uh, council is sending a message that we want to help our young people. We want to be sure that we're involved and in a in part of their life and this is the way that the, the city government can send that message so with that uh i'm open for discussion or a mo motion or whatever you'd like to do i make a motion we pass pending orders 3177 on third and final reading second that will be on first reading no it's third it's third and final reading. we passed okay, it that's right i'm sorry you're right we are on third and final. it's right in front of me sam <laughs> 
in red. <laughs> right. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Gabe, yeah. Gabe, Gabe, second. That we consider pending ordinance 3177 on third and final reading. History on this, it was presented last time, and uh, when we came to uh, uh, suspend the rules, it was not the thing that happened, so we had to carry it over till tonight. Uh, any further discussion on pending ordinance 3177? None appearing. Are you ready for the question? Yes. Okay, we'll uh, we'll call vote. Councilman Weber. Yes. Councilman Schommel. Yes. Councilman Nobby. Yes. Councilwoman Montgomery. No. Councilman Creech. No. Councilwoman Rich. No. It's a tie. It's a tie. A long vote. I uh, I believe that we have to do this and I'll break the tie, and we'll put two thousand dollars into your rally. They always do this to me when there's one missing. <laughs> <laughs> make me they make the decision. The motion carries, and uh, we will put two thousand dollars into your rally from the Riverboat Fund. Pending ordinance thirty-one seventy-eight. This is to amending a park uh, non-reverting. This is a cleanup ordinance. When the park board was dissolved some eight or nine years ago, Actually, we did not like clean up that ago. ordinance. <laughs> huh? It's like 11 or 12 11 years. or 12 <laughs> years ago now. You know, we were close. We did not change the language in the ordinance. Julie will read it for you tonight, the changes. Well, you can, you can see where we, we got made. It, in front of you. it had said in previous under, that was created under the control of the Parks Board. Mm -hmm. And we just changed that to read the Board of Public Works and Safety. And that, that expenditures can be made from non-reverting funds on approved claims that are allowed by the Board of Public Works and Safety. That previously said Parks Board. And the only thing we did add, um, that when a program activity generates large balances or a surplus in that fund, that that can be transferred back into the Park Operating Fund. The, the original ordinance did not allow for that to be transferred back to the Have we had any fund. instances of that happening lately? Well, we had transfer large balances. Yeah, we have a large balance. We haven't ever done it, though. But Do we have just, any large balances that we could transfer? Probably some. Not not huge balances, but, you know, maybe a couple thousand here and a couple thousand But do we do the fact that we no longer have a park board? Just, we just need to get this Well, done. I think it just kind of cleans it up a yeah. little bit. Okay. Mr. Baker, you kind of feel like this is the thing to do, right? Right, yeah, it's just a uh, uh, house clean. <clears throat> okay. I recommend. <clears throat> Everybody understand? Mm -hmm. Anybody out there have a question? Problem? I see we got the park superintendent there. Okay. I move we pass pending ordinance 3178 on first reading. Second. Second. Motion to consider pending ordinance 3178 on first reading. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Uh, how about roll call vote? Councilman Schommel? Yes. Councilman Nobby? Yes. Councilwoman Montgomery? Yes. Councilman Creech? Yes. Councilwoman Risch? Yes. Councilman Weber? Yes. That has passed. Would you like to suspend the rules and consider it on third and final reading? So moved. Second. Got a motion and a second to uh, consider pending orders 3178 on third and final reading. On suspension of rules only, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, we can proceed. So moved. Second. Got a motion and a second to consent consider pending ordinance 3178 on third and final reading. Any discussion? Have a roll call vote. Councilman Nobby? Yes. Councilwoman Montgomery? Yes. Councilman Creech? Yes. Councilwoman Risch? Yes. Councilman Weber? Yes. Councilman Schommel? Yes. You have passed that on third and final reading, and we'll put that in the archives so it's a correction to the, the uh, formal ordinance. Pending ordinance 3179. This is an additional appropriation, again, from Riverboat for the police SOP study and the new procedures to be put into book form for the police department. There was a lot of discussion about this at the last meeting, and uh, you <coughs> authorized the... Uh, Clerk Treasurer to advertise for a public hearing. I will open that public hearing. Any discussion about that issue out there? 
anybody at all want. This is putting $5,000 out to uh, hire an attorney. He works for Ball State and other colleges and he is an expert on police practices. A little history on this. Uh, what happened in Ferguson, Missouri has a lot to do with this. This book will put procedures into place that tell when uh, force should be used, when they think a taser should be used, how you conduct a inquiry, how you uh, cuff a prisoner, the way you treat a prisoner, uh, just a whole, <coughs> a lot of things. We now have those SOPs, but they've been kind of a little group here, a little group here, a little group here, all put together, and they've been changed over the years. We want them to come up to match state law and to match what is morally and uh, should be done when you're handling prisoners. And it's not just for the prisoners' protection. It's a good bit for the policeman's protection. So if something happens and you go down and he's suspended and say he has to use his weapon, you say, did he follow the procedure when he used his weapon? When he chased that car in a pursuit, did he do it according to the rules and regulations. How far does he follow that or chase that person? Did he endanger his life or their life? And all that stuff will be spelled out. There was feeling here on this council that it should be left to the next administration because we're in our last year. And there was other feelings that felt this needed to be done right now. And then from here on in, it ought to be tweaked whenever it had to be to deal with state law. It has nothing to do with what a policeman gets paid. Uh, has nothing to do with its benefits. So that's just a little history, uh, and we're at that place right now. So do you have any questions after I explain what we're doing? None appearing. We'll close the public hearing and give it to the council. Council, you know all about it. You discussed it heavily last time. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, if I may, um, last week, or I'm sorry, two weeks ago, Mayor Irving made a, a real nice presentation. The, the police chief made a nice presentation. The police chief is, is a personal friend of mine, but that aside, at this particular time, I will be voting against this. Thank you. Uh, the only thing I've had people tell me out in the public is they can't, why do we have to do it now? That it's gone this long and why now? And I've had several people stop me. Nobody's called me, but I've had people stop me <coughs> out and out in town, and that's the only comments I've had. Well, I believe the police officers need up-to-date guidelines. I think some of the ones we have are outdated, and I think it's time that we uh, bite the bullet, spend five thousand dollars, and have this done. As far as the next administration throwing it away, I can't see that happening. That'd be completely irresponsibility on my part if they have a document that's been presented or prepared by. An attorney that's been in the game for a long time is only charging us five thousand dollars. I think it's a bargain, and we should jump on it. All right? Any further discussion? Yeah, I, I still, I feel like the, t the timing's off on this. I really do, uh, because I think what's going to happen is we have the potential for a new administration um, to to get rid of it or to keep it. We don't. We don't have a crystal ball, so we can't make decisions for what people will do in the future. And uh, as I was thinking about this, uh, do we have any idea how long it would take for them to write it? Can I give you any indication how long it would take to get this in place? No, but it would probably be, I'd say, within six months. So if, if, we, if it's going to be six months out, and we, right now we currently don't have a contract, if we wait a simple four more months for the new administration to take place, I think we'd be in a much better position to make a decision than we are at this current time. So I'll, I encourage people to vote no on this one. Oh, I'm saying that I don't know what that even has it. The next administration has anything to do with it. Either the policemen have guidelines or they don't have guidelines. And if I were a policeman, I would be, I would be, a little reserved when I had to do something. I mean, perfect example. The other night, when did anybody see that guy throw the? You know, um, oh, he threw the guy down. He's paralyzed now. I mean, I was just wondering. I wonder if he had SOP. I mean, only because was he supposed to throw him down that way or was he not supposed to throw him down that way? And uh, 
I think we're fools not to do it. I, I just don't understand it. Troy, I have a question for you. Who writes your SOPs? Ours is similar to how things have been done through the past. We've kind of took them from different departments. Do you feel comfortable with yours, or do you wish you had updated, more precise? We've updated them in the past, and we've took them to John, and John's looked at them, and we brought them to the Board of Works, and they've been updated. But there's some of them that need to be updated, you know, the, the ones that have to do with cell phones and taking pictures, you know, and seeing I mean, Do you feel them. comfortable with the ones you have, or would you, I mean, if you had your, your way, would you rather have a professional redo them and have it? I think all SOPs and guidelines and SOGs should be reviewed on the time. Okay. Well, again, well, I appreciate that. I just think if ours are as bad as, and I have to go by what the chief says because, again, he's the, the man at the police department. And if he says they're bad, and if John says that they're bad, that, that he's afraid of, I mean, I think we're just foolish not to give the police something to go by. I, it's, it's almost unheard of. Why would you wait? And, again, as I said last time, in all the time we've been here, friend, has it ever been brought up? No. No, it's never been brought up, so I don't even think it, another administration would even think about it. Unless somebody like the Chiefs came in and said, we, got, we have some bad guidelines here. If we have good guidelines, they're going to be happy. And the, the police are going to be happy. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. I, I, I want to speak to that just a second. Each, and, each department head has the ability and the decision to set their own SOPs. So if we were to get a new one, a, a, new, a new administration in the next year, which is likely, then they have every right to set them however they desire. Well, isn't that the problem that's happened here? We've had that happen, and we've had this piggyback on this one, this piggyback, and none of them make any sense. Is that correct? Or some of them contradict the other? I think that's what's happened but they over the years. They don't have to accept what we have, is what I'm saying. If we wait for the next administration to take office and, and to make their SOPs what they and desire, they then they can change them how they desire. If we, if we make a decision now for them, we may be seriously just throwing away money that, that's going to be... And used for two months. Again, I'll just bring up the point. It's, in all 12 years, it's never been brought up. Not one time has it been brought up. And it's not been brought up because it's never been an issue until but, now. Gary, and I don't, I do not mean this to Chief Counselor mm -hmm. in any way. As one of the Board of Public Works members brought up, this administration has been in office seven years. Seven years. And now we've got 10 months to go. I, I'm with Gabe. I, I don't. I think because when a new administration takes over, they're going to want to tweak the SOPs. We don't even have a contract. That's just me. I appreciate that. Again, I'm just going to say one last thing. I don't think it's ever too, I mean, at the end of an administration to do the right thing. And so I can't imagine another administration ever wanting to tweak it unless it's brought up. Just my point. I mean, that's all I'm saying. I just think of it. If we had a month to go, you got to do the right thing. I mean, and the right thing is give these policemen guidelines and give them proper guidelines so we don't get in trouble. I'm surprised we haven't had them. Should have brought this up a couple of years ago. It's your well, fault. I no, I'm just joking. Connie, do you have a comment? Yes. Um, I mean, I see both sides on this. Um, I think the timing, I'm kind of with the timing. Um, I have no doubt that every police officer knows how to conduct himself, became very qualified to be a policeman. I'm trying to, trying my hardest to, to kind of correlate it with like my job. I mean, um, every facility sort of tweaks a, a, a talented registered person into how they want them to conduct their business. Um, and I, I guess I think I have faith in you and, and Deputy Perkins that maybe you can take small issues and just go forward with them for the next 10 months. Um, the few things that maybe are missing, um, I, I, think I, I think I'm just on the timing thing. Um, I'm just, and the money. I mean, we've just got our, we've just got our irons in too many fires. I just feel like the 5,000 is a lot right now. John, I know you're not a decision maker. But as our legal advisor, have you got comments you'd like to make here? 
Yeah, as I've said before, uh, the current SOPs are very much out of date. Uh, they're contradictory in many cases. Chief and I have worked with them, tried to work with them, and we've just hit stone walls on several occasions trying to decide what to do with what this thing is saying. And we had a terribly difficult time in making the, the decision, hoping it was the right decision. Uh, they're generally difficult to work with in that regard. And they expose the city to serious liability issues. I, I think that's probably the most important uh, aspect of this that should be realized. And, and I can tell you a good set of up-to-date standard operating procedures uh, for any administration will not be modified to any extent whatsoever. They'll be valuable. There'll be something that no one wants to throw away or, or alter or modify, especially when it's done by a, a man as expert as Charles Brown, who's the gentleman we're talking about here. So I would strongly recommend that you consider it. Um, it's valuable, it's necessary, it's needed. It's a mistake not to have it. I guess that's all I can tell you. <clears throat> Does this quote deal go off the table at a certain point? or? What'd you can say, that, Connie? Can this deal with um, Charles Braun, does it go off the table after a certain period, or can we take it up later? I, I'm not, I, I'm I mean, sure, you know, if he's, he's available, I'm sure he would. Let me, uh, let me give you the last two weeks since we discussed this, uh, both sides. I've talked with police officers. I've talked with other mayors, talked with a couple of city, of attor city attorneys, and uh, tried to educate myself Being a police department anymore is more than what it was when I grew up. You had an officer on the corner, you expected him to say hi to you, and if you got lost, your mama told you to go see him and he'd take you home. And uh, uh, most police officers never pulled their gun in the whole 20 years they were on the police department. I want to tell you something. If you want to check things out, listen to Channel 8, and I'm not pushing Channel 8, listen to Channel 7 if you don't like Channel 8. Seven, eight. Every day in Indianapolis, they have to pull their gun. There's a murder or there's some reason during the night that this has to happen. Every time it happens, a police officer is suspended with pay most of the time, once in a while without pay. The officer has to go through a tremendous uh, remorse, number one, for shooting a guy. And if you kill the guy, then you have to live with that the rest of your life in an SOP that would tell when you use deadly force and when you don't. It would tell you, you don't go down Western Avenue 75 miles an hour in a police car to chase somebody that run a stop sign. Uh, those things that have to be explained and spelled out, they have nothing to do with the union contract. I think our policemen are waiting for direction because they're afraid of what is taking place around the country. Um, when I first heard about this, I can tell you, I told Dave I don't want to spend $5,000 on it, and if you take it out of the general fund, I'll veto it. They agreed that they, if they did it, they'd take it out of the, the riverboat fund, and that's kind of what the riverboat fund is for. Um, but being a police officer, in even a town our size now, I, I keep up with what they're doing I have a radio in my car, I listen to them, I, I visit with them, I, I had a police officer in there talking to me, we're entering a new era, everybody's going to be carrying a taser, those SOPs need to tell when to use a taser and how to use a taser, and what qualifies you to use it. Uh, we have an SOP that says you have to wear a vest, uh, only with a doctor's excuse can you get out of wearing the vest because it protects the city should something happen. It'll tell the city council when they have to replace those vests and what protection police officers have to have. Nothing to do, again, with the union contract or their pay. I am convinced that it's probably the most important that a police department have these rules and regulations today. And I think whoever 
is in the next administration would appreciate this administration getting this in order, getting our house in order before we turn it over. I have a feeling I'm going to work until the 31st of December at midnight and at that time we'll turn it gently over to the new people and we will support them whoever they are whether they be Democrat, Republican, friend or foe but I want to hand it to them in the best shape we can. Uh, it is easy for me some days to think I'm not going to fight that fight. I'm going to leave that to the next guy. And I've told her that, the clerk treasurer. She smiles at me and I don't think she has any intention of letting down. We maneuvered the money daily. Uh, I spent till almost five o'clock this afternoon trying to figure out how to buy parts for trucks and snow plows. Um, with the clerk treasurer telling me she takes care of the money, I try to make good decisions. I, uh, I am convinced that we probably ought to move forward and get those things in place because in the next 10 months they could pull their gun, we could have this face us. Uh, things are happening here I've never seen happen before. Uh, an example is the heroin deaths. You know, just <clears throat> did we put a stop to it? Well, no, but we sure slowed it down because all of the agencies got together and worked together. And uh, we aren't having the heroin deaths. We're not having the overdoses we had last October, November. So you can see them working. And I think it's, it's just important at this point that uh, we probably put those things in place immediately uh, or as soon as possible. I'll tell you one more thing. We went through an officer that got a restraint against him from couldn't carry a gun. I can honestly say the Board of Works nor the city attorney, we struggled with handling it. If there had been an SOP in place on how you handle that, from a professional like Mr. Braun, and we consulted him daily. I, I don't did we pay him, John, for his consultation? Yes. We did pay him. I'm <laughs> sure we did. Okay. But we had to have him on a regular basis telling us when do we stop pay? When do we stop benefits? When do we do this? What do we do? And we're not done with it yet. And it's gone on for I say six, seven months. More than that, by a year. It's, uh, getting, it's getting close to a year. It's getting close to a year. Yeah. If we had SOPs in place to tell us how to handle that situation, it would have been just like that. But we had to feel our way through the whole operation because none of us knew. I've said enough. I'm going to turn it over to the council. It's your decision. Uh, I, I have a question. Um, well, <coughs> I, I agree with most of what you've said, except when you said something about the, um, like, when to use deadly force. I mean, because how many meetings ago was it that we agreed and there was some heated talk about how many tasers we bought and now you're sort of saying that we bought those tasers but now they don't know when to use them and oh, no. or, or at the time they didn't know how to use it or no what I'm saying them. is it's the rules on what constitutes you to be ready to use it that's what's going to be in the SOP what do you have to go through before you're ready to use a taser because you don't want to use a taser in someone's face mm -hmm. so there's got to be rules what how you tase somebody okay Deadly force is when you pull the gun. When you pull the gun. You know, if the guy's running away from you and your life's not in any danger, I would say, you know, but if he's coming at you forward and he's holding the gun, then you pull the gun. And those are the things that's all spelled out in those police SOPs. And uh, I, can, I can tell you, cities are scrambling to get it together to keep from having lawsuits. It don't make any difference when an officer might shoot somebody or tase somebody. If that person dies, we're going to have a lawsuit. And that's what Mr. Baker was talking about. We've discussed it at length. And like I say, I'm here just as your moderator. I'm telling you, uh, if I was coming in as mayor in uh, January, I'd sure want to have that all in place. But, well, I'm going to say one last thing, and that is that as long as I've been here, I haven't heard Mr. Baker say very many things. But they've all been intelligent, of course. <laughs> but, 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 I mean, he's pretty adamant about this. And we pay him to, to, to keep us legally sound. And, and he's pretty adamant about it. So, I mean, you, I say you listen to the experts. And so, mm -hmm. there he is. And he wasn't wishy-washy, not one bit wishy-washy about it. And... Uh, 
Uh, personally, I think we're, it's a huge mistake if we don't do it. And it's a huge mistake to think that just because we have 10 months left, we don't have to do as much as we used to do. Doesn't matter what the what what decision is, it has to, you know, you got to make the decision based on what it is right now. And I'm 100% for it. So that's the way I'll vote. Uh, okay. Mr. Uh, Mr. Baker, you also spoke of the price you thought was very reasonable for the work that will be required. Yeah, yeah, the price is very reasonable. I've got a pretty good idea of the number of hours it will take to do what he needs to do. It'll be substantial. And the price he gave us was a flat price for whatever time it takes to do it. So I, I think that's fair. And 2016, the price, <coughs> the price could be more in 2016. Yeah, it would more than likely go up. Well, we could ask for storm for the money back and use it for this. You mind? That's a done oh. deal. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> that was a joke. Okay. <laughs> All in, everybody. Okay. I'll take a motion. I have one more question. Yes. During the last seven and a half years, you've never gone before the Board of Works and asked for changes in these rules? Any changes? That's what the, the way the paper sounded. Like there had never been any anybody going before the Board of Works asking for changes in these rules at all in seven and a half years. The, the procedure would be that whoever would change the rules like the fire chief back there, then would bring those SOPs to the Board of Works for approval. Okay, and nobody ever has done that on the police department in seven and a half years? I don't think we've changed any SOPs in seven and a half years, have we, John? You know, I can't remember. Have we? I we've know. added some chief things to it, yes. But the thing is, if I may... Um, you want to come to the podium? Sure. Keep calm and corrected. <laughs> I will. I can tell hard. him that he works it's, for me. It's hard to do sometimes, Mayor. It really is. But you can. I, I'm, I'm totally in control. <laughs> 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 to answer your question, what usually happens with rules and regulations on a police department like ours, okay, like what we've got now is a mess. They, they went and borrowed from this department, this department, like discussed before. What, what they should have done with them rules and regulations from other departments, there should have been a committee formed under this administration either. And we have talked about this before, but it takes months and months of meetings and setting down and going over state and federal laws to coincide with this. And, and it really, honestly, in the last seven and a half years, this has been a different administration than I've ever worked for in my life. And I happen to be the police chief. I'm trying to do what's right. Yeah, I'm going to retire this year. You know, and I could, like I said last time, I could say, hey, my problem, I'm leaving. But I don't feel that way because I, I care about this police department. I care about this city. And, and just like the mayor said, when this change is over, you know, it's going to be everything done and everything else, and, and it'll be easy for somebody to come in and operate. Also, you've got to stop and think that the next chief of police is going to come out of this police department. And believe me, all my officers are on board with this. And so if one's the chief, which one of them will be, will be ha very happy to have these done. So I'm asking for you to vote for and, and let's do what's right. I've learned let's do what's not what we want to do, but let's do what's right. And the ball's in your court and it's your decision. What, I'll sit what, back. what was your incentive to bring it up to begin with? My incentive to... I mean, how long I, ago, number one? Well, because they, they were a mess. But we worked with them. But John and I have talked, and others have talked. We never had time to ever stay on because when I was sitting ready to stay here, we have been very busy. I'm a police chief. I'm a grass cop. I'm a property-looking cop. You know, I go out and look at dilapidated properties. I send letters out. Okay, and, and plus, I, I, well, the, I never see a police chief or the chief's office have as many responsibilities as this, this has because we've lost manpower over the years and we've built up. Also, I take care of your traffic lights. When a one falls off out here like it did over the weekend, you know, I get with the street department, we get it corrected, I make sure that it gets put back in place and everything else. I take care of the signs, the ordinances, and stuff like this too. So I've never seen a chief of police or his office do these many things. We've always done them, but we've always have assigned them out to other people. We don't have that manpower anymore. So what I'm trying to do is do what's right for the next administration to come in and, and make it a little easier for them and make us safe because I am that police officer who was involved in the shooting. Mm -hmm. And I was there with no, no, 
not much to go on. And that chief at the time did what he thought, you know, was right, and it worked out. But there was a lot of gray areas there, a lot of them. And I've been, I've been on this department for almost 35 years, and I've been involved in uh, several things in my past. And believe me, when it comes to liability, and since I've been on this department, or excuse me, in this position, I've also been sued a few times. And Mayor knows all about that. So this is a liability thing here uh, from everything. It's like, the, it's like the police department's Bible. It's the police department's Bible. It's what we operate on and what says gives you the authority. We got authority by state and federal laws. But when it comes down to different, different things in your department, you know, that it's very important on how you incorporate and how you enforce these federal and state laws and ordinances. So, guys, I can't stress to you enough how serious this is. And if you really care about this town and this police department, you ever give it real, some real consideration because it won't be changed. A, a chief might come in and say, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let uh, four guys work this shift and I'm going to have two work this shift because they're, it's not busy. That's the things they can tweak. The main body of that thing will not be changed if it's done right. And and answer your question, it takes a lot of time, and we've talked about it before, but we haven't had the time, and we've had Mr. Braun offer to do this for five thousand dollars. He had also he he was a, he taught criminal law at the police academy for many years, very very well educated, and knows state and federal laws like the back of his hand, and he's offered that to us. And I doubt if you'll get that deal again. So that's what I got to say, Mayor. Thank you. We, uh, wait, wait just a minute, Chief. Um, you know, over the over the past seven and a half years, we did have a traffic safety police officer that took care of the signs, took care of this, took care of that. We did have. He calls him a grass cop. I won't do that. Uh, we had a, uh, what, did, what did we really call them, uh, ordinance, ordinance enforcer. enforcer. Uh, we did away with that. We did away with the uh, city engineer. And uh, if I want a quarter paint, I get to go buy it. Or I'll ask Dave when he's up there in the north end, get me a quarter gray paint so we can finish 911. We run this Just place department kind of like uh, Mayberry, you might say, but we get it done. We've gone through the entire police department and renewed it. We're finishing 911, put up some of the final trim today. We did it all in house with very little money. This entire building's been gone through. And I sit here sometimes and I get, I got to keep calm. But I don't re think you realize just how much we have done. Uh, when we unload something, I get Dennis because he can lift it. And I mean, we do it all. And I've watched the police department. And I've seen the police department. I've come in here at night when one of the police officers has to go into the restroom. He's all full of mud because he's been wrestling underneath the house in a meth lab. I've seen it. I see them when they come in here when they are so hyper because they had to help somebody do uh, CPR on the unit because we're shorthanded. They just do it. I, I, I've seen them do everything. And, and I, I'm around. I'm always watching them. I don't ride with them because I'm scared to death. But... And I don't carry a gun, I don't wear a black uniform, but I, I watch them and I listen to them and they come in and give me reports. And uh, it's a different world today. You all know it, I don't have to tell you, it's a different world. I wish it was like it was when I was a, a kid, but it's not. It's, uh, you know, when you have 20 heroin deaths this last year, when you have the things that we go through every day, uh, I drive by the gas station up there and there's a placement over here and a placement over here with the guns out hiding behind a door. I've seen it right there in my own neighborhood. Uh, I watch him have to go into a building and then I even watch him when he goes into an upstairs of a house and there's a dead deer laying in the bed with a blanket over it. Yeah, make a face. That's what they face. That happened. That actually happened. I guess I'm not supposed to say that on TV, but it's time the public hear the truth. But anyway. What's your pleasure, Council? I don't think I have a motion to make. I'll make the motion. Okay, you make the motion. I just did. I'll make the motion uh, to pass this. We're considering pending ordinance 3179. Yes. Okay. I'll second. Got a motion and a second. We consider pending ordinance 3179, first reading, which would authorize the uh, Board of Works to spend $5,000 to develop the SOPs for the Connorsville Police Department. 
Discussion. Not that we haven't had any. <coughs> any discussion further? Ready for the question? Yes. Okay. Roll call vote. Councilwoman Montgomery? No. Councilman Creech? No. Councilwoman Rich? No. Councilman Weber? Yes. Councilman Shomo? Yes. Councilman Navi? No. Four two. Oh. Three to two. Four to two. Four to two. Four two. No. Ruby said yes. <laughs> you have defeated the motion. Pending ordinance uh, number thirty-one eighty. Additional appropriation. Uh, published new legal notices. Where are you taking that from? It's tax abatement fund. Okay. We do it every year. Okay. Mm -hmm. This will come from the tax abatement fund. I'll move to pass pending orders 3180 on first reading. Second. Got a motion and a second that we consider pending ordinance 3180 on the first reading. An additional appropriation to pay for public legal notices and the money will come from the uh, tax, abatement tax abatement fund. Any discussion? <coughs> Any discussion? And appearing, all in favor say aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed? Motion paid. Would you like to suspend the rules and consider pending orders 3180 on third and final reading? So moved. Second. Got a motion and a second that we consider pending ordinance 3180 on third and final reading. On suspension of rules only. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? You may move forward. So moved. Second. Got a motion and a second that we consider pending ordinance 3180 on third and final reading. Uh, any discussion? Appearing all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. You have passed pending ordinance 3180. I have snuck an ordinance in here for you. This will be pending ordinance 3181. Uh, and I'm going to let Julie explain. Do you, you want me to or do you want to do it? I can do it. Okay. Um, the utilities would like to hire some part-time office help and uh, they have people that have been there a long time they get a lot of vacation a lot of time off and they really you know would cut the office down to six girls and they really can use the additional help i think you plan on using what 20 hours a week or something like that mike yeah, well, they and we didn't have we haven't had a salary ordinance that included office help part-time office help you know we have uh, at this point six office people five of them would eligible to retire right now um i think one is going to this year and another one is thinking about it and we're at the point where we really need to get somebody in here to help um so we cross train it's very hard to cross train anybody because um, just like today there's only three girls there today out of six because of vacation time, sick days, personal days. And this would give us the flexibility to do that, to get people better cross trained. Because, you know, it's hard to pull Cindy from what she's doing to go train in the financial part of it when we need her with the meter. So it'd be, to, you know, we have a part timer, maybe cover Cindy while she goes trains. And these jobs takes more than an hour and a half to train. So um, we're talking four or five, a couple of weeks to train positions and we really need the backup to do that and the salary ordinance doesn't really call for any type of part-time help for the office just maintenance help Mike um I, mean, I think this is a good idea um but this office person would be trained in like all the it's all possible all the different yeah I mean it, I think the first thing we need to do is train her up front so that would give time for the girls up front to be cross-trained okay so we're kind of using her to relieve our full-time people to get cross-trained. And when that happens, then this part-time girl will start maybe doing a little bit more cross-training. Um, I, I noticed that it's highlighted here, 1150, and the custodians, like 1312. Do you, do you think you'll be able to get someone for 1150? Um, I, I hope so. I mean, okay. the easiest thing to do is just left it the way it was, but uh, we felt like maybe... Um, 1150 maybe um, a fair salary for okay. a new person. 
How many hours would they be working? They are limited uh, before they 20, be... 25 hours. Okay. Well, it'll be set for once the, uh, the figure is set, the Board of Works will decide. Okay, but, but they, they have can't, to keep it. Yeah, they have to stay under 30 hours. Yeah, okay, is because it? of benefits, right? Right. Yeah. Do you guys have this money in the budget? Uh, yes. <clears throat> like I said, we had the full time yeah. office uh, person that's no longer there, so there's money. This is really an amendment to the salary ordinance. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. I move it past pending artist 3181 on first reading. Second. Second. Are you planning on replacing the people that are retiring this year? Um, we'd like to, yes. Would this be the person, perhaps? Um, or? Perhaps. I hate, to, I, mean, I hate to make that call okay. right now. Can't pigeonhole yourself there. Yeah. <laughs> 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 right. Uh, this gives us the flexibility to make that Did decision. we talk at some point when, when we're talking about the um, generation of the utility bills that you guys don't do the billing? Is that right? Uh, we have a company that does the billing. Mm -hmm. I mean, we send it all to them and they send out the... Yeah. And, they, and they also eliminated the office pass position too. What? The office manager's position was eliminated, which is a substantial savings. Yeah. So you're happy with this. So how many people are you girls. down? Yeah. Just a one full time person. Oh. We're ready. I have a motion to uh, consider pending ordinance 3181 on first reading. That would allow uh, us to amend the ordinance to say. Uh, Eleven dollars and fifty cents, isn't it? Yes, for part-time office. Eleven dollars and fifty cents for part-time office help at the utility. It would be up to the board of works to decide how many hours they were to work since they run the utility. Um, ready for the question? Uh, maybe we better have a roll call vote. I'm not sure. Here. Councilman Creech. Yes. Councilwoman Rich. Yes. Councilman Weber. Yes. Councilman Schommel. Yes. Councilman Nobby. Yes. Councilwoman Montgomery. Yes. 6 0. Yep. 6 votes. Would you like to suspend the rules and consider pending ordinance 3181 on uh, third and final reading? So moved. Second. Got a motion and a second that we suspend the rules so we can consider pending ordinance 3181 on third and final reading. On suspension of rules only, all in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? None appearing. If you'd like to move forward. So moved. Second. Got a motion and a second that we consider pending ordinance 3181. Uh, on third and final reading, this ordinance would set uh, the rate for part-time help at the utility in the office at $11.50. Any discussion? Okay, roll call vote. Councilwoman Rich? I'm going to be a woman and change my vote to no. <laughs> okay. Councilman Weber? Yes. Councilman Schommel? Yes. Councilman Nobby? Yes. Councilwoman Montgomery? Yes. Councilman Creech? Yes. Now the vote is five to one. Still carries. Okay. Airport, Gene Warren, he's not here tonight. Probably froze up out there. EDG Director, Dan Parker, he must be froze up. Fire Department, I'm sorry, Fire Chief, you wanted to speak a long time ago. Huh? Uh, it wasn't about a fire or anything, was it? No. Okay. January we had 94 runs, 272 hours spent on emergencies, 12 inspections, 12 investigations, 8 pre plans, 48 hours in training, uh, $1,348 in FLSA and overtime combined. I don't know if I have anything else for you. Do you have any questions for me? The amount was $251,177.32. Uh, a little bit higher than usual, but three pays during January. You also had medical exams of almost $8,800. Is that one time a year? Yeah, that was the, the big physical one. It was carryover from last year. We had a lot of carryover from last year to the jewelry. Yes. And what's your contractual services? Of over 3000 What was that for? Um, can you help me with that? I'm sorry. I can't remember right off the top of my head. Which one was it, Fran? About three thousand. Yeah, three thousand eighty-one dollars fifty-nine cents. In the month of January. For contractual services, yes. Yeah. Was it air tanks? 
we did some of that. Troy. Okay, thanks, Chief. Yeah, yeah, probably will be at the. Yeah, it was up. Uh, we um, we had to test a lot of air tanks. Um, ran that added a lot to it. Okay. Um, we have to do them every five years. There was portions on the back sheet. And then we had um, we had a um, blower go out um, over at Station Four. We had a blower. Right, that was about a thousand dollars, wasn't it? We had five hundred and some, and then we had the um, the uh, oiler comes in on this month coming. So we had some things break down okay. right at the end of the year. But the Corsons, the Corsons did get down with all doing the air tanks, and then they did all of them on the. Um, ladder and everything. So we're done with that. They should be winding up. Okay. Okay, thanks, Troy. I got a question for you, Troy, before you go. Uh, I had a guy call me a couple days ago and we're actually stopped by and see me. Um, and he had a, uh, I made a call in because he had smelled smoke and he wanted somebody to come by and check it out. And he said he had uh, a couple, I think two or three fire trucks pulled up to his house and um, uh, maybe an ambulance or something. <coughs> And he was just wanted to know why he had so many people come. I said, I don't know, so I'd ask. Do you know what goes in the decision making there? Yeah, um, smell of smoke in the house. Do we send let's all truck run with that unit because if he's got smoke in there, he sh could have fire. Mm -hmm. the protocol is to send the unit. So that's why he sent two trucks or three trucks in there? Yeah. Okay. All right, thanks. EMS. Thanks, Troy. Okay, for January, our expenses for the city share was $63,225.43. Our receipts was $17,861.80 for a total of $45,363.63. And we made 194 rounds. Any questions? No, am I still good? Doing good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Park Superintendent. Revenue for the month was $5,810. Uh, expenditures were $55,279. Simply the fact that they were only up three times last month, so that didn't really help out too much. Um, some activities sign uh, going on right now are we have all, all of our spring sign-ups. Um, spring youth soccer deadline is March 13th. Uh, T-ball and slow pitch are on April 10th. Um, all of our sign-ups are $25. Uh, we also have um, sponsorships available for uh, soccer and T-ball and slow pitch. So if anyone's interested, any businesses out there would like to sponsor those programs, we welcome them. Uh, get you a t-shirt and we put your name on a sign, so. Are the signs going on the fences? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's the sponsorship room? I believe it is $125 for soccer that gets you fall and spring, uh, and then $75 for softball and 75 for people. Are sign-ups the same as it was last year? Yep, they stay the same. Any questions? Thanks, Jesse. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, the sign-up's going. Good. Slow but steady. Okay. Please stick around. Mm -hmm. We have 1,233 law reports, 23 citations, zero ordinance violations, 38 warnings, 10 personal injury accidents, 41 property damage accidents, zero fatalities, and 90 arrests. Did you know had any truck stopped on Western or anything? I don't believe so. If they have, they haven't wrote me any tickets or anything. They're probably just giving a verbal warning, but I, I don't really know, Fran. I just wonder. I know this is truck traffic. I've, we've been kind of monitoring some and uh, the local deliveries, and then also I've got a lot of calls in regards to uh, some truckers are allowed to park over at the old DNM yes. plant, and they, they're allowed to come in and park over there, but uh, um, other than that, it's been pretty quiet. Good. Your overtime's too high. One thousand one hundred five hundred. Yeah, the swap call out. 
Yeah, remember I brought that over to you. We talked about it. They you actually had a SWAT call out. Yes, we had a SWAT call out. In regards to. Uh, it cost us $1,500. Oh, pardon? It cost us $1,500. No, probably detectives being called out too at different times for the whole. Yeah, we had a couple month. of those too. Pardon? We had a couple of those too. Yeah. I think. Hey, the cost of operating your department last month, $256,756.55. You'll listen right there and get those two figures in your head. Fire and police eat up almost the general fund. Over yeah, those half two a million dollars. For the if, you, if you put those two together, council. Not saying it's wrong, I'm just telling you, that's where your general funds go. Street Department, David Joe. We had a little bit of overtime this last time because somebody lets it snow every once in a while. And it, it can't snow on a Tuesday or Wednesday afternoon. It's got to do it on a holiday or a weekend. So anyway, that's where the overtime's at. Um, we've been filling a lot of potholes lately. Last week I had three trucks out in one day. But with this weather like it is, it's not going to last long. They'll come, they'll come back. With it being like Thursday morning, what's supposed to be five below, and not get much warmer than five above. So. And we will be picking up recycle on, on Thursday too for the folks that we need to know, want to know. The, my guys and gals, they're a decent bunch when it comes to cold weather, they'll go out in it and work. So just like the rest of the utilities and the other city workers. But anyway, we will be, we will be doing that Thursday, so with the recycling. Any I'm sorry. I thought yeah, I got a question. Uh, that hole on the Houghton's back, I don't know if you've seen it or not, it's pretty big. Yeah, I got, that's, yes, that's, yeah. that's down. It's just, I got when, when I can do it with yeah. the weather. I understand. In the cold hole, it just won't stay at all. Yeah. David, uh, I had a gentleman ask me, uh, are we okay on the salt and sand? Right now I'm sitting on with what I don't have and what I have, about 350 okay. tons of salt. Okay. So we're, we're good at this point. We should have, okay. being the last week of February coming up, hopefully we'll have about... I'm not going to brag. We should have some <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> for next year. That's what I'm hoping. So, operating your department last month, one hundred thirty-three thousand eight hundred eight dollars and forty-five cents. I'm, I'm like you folks. I want to leave the next street department though without any salt. So, David, superintendent. One last thing. Would you share with the, the council community? We talked about when it gets extremely cold. The way you handle the recycling. It, it, well, it's, it's kind of strange. It, it, it saves a little bit of fuel, but uh, I'll do it again this Thursday. I think I've done it twice so far. We take the the, the track, the Packard, and we'll set it somewhere, like behind Grandview School or wherever on the north end and south end and so forth. We'll move it, but not often. And we'll take the pickup trucks and go around and pick up the recycling. That way they can get back in the vehicles. When it's zero out, I don't expect them to be hanging on the back of a truck going down the street. But this, time-wise, it works out well, and the Packard trucks are losing, using about a quarter of the, the fuel that they normally would use, so I'm, uh, I can buy tires for pickup trucks so much cheaper than I can buy them for the Packard trucks. So <coughs> I've been doing that, and it seems to be working. So uh, it right. works out with Tom and all that. Well, I think well, also the main thing to me with the, with the guys, they're not getting toes frostbitten. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with well, Zero, you know, who wants way. to be hanging on the back of the truck. And yeah. We do have some, some spurts that we do travel down the street ways to one spot to the other. Yeah. I want to talk about the, uh, the potholes. We try to fix those potholes within 24 hours if you call them in. What I'd like for you to do in your districts, or even if you see one in town, call the street department and give it to Bonnie. If you call it and give it to me or Melissa, then we just got to call over the street department. If you know exactly where it is, uh, someone called in the other day and there was one over behind Schommel's. I got the wrong Schommel. And uh, it it's easier if you just call the street department and tell them where those potholes are. We'll try to get them filled in 24 hours. You know, Your Honor, uh, there was a thing on, I was Channel 13 News. They had the same issue we mm -hmm. did today. Uh, they use uh, the patch and they fill it as soon as they can and then first real good hard ball and freeze, it, it pops right out. So, you know, I- And two, we try to keep it down below the surface because of the plow hits it and knocks it right back out around the hole. One other thing that you, uh, I need to mention too, I forgot. The street lights. I'm on a campaign about that. We've gotten several of them done. I still need calls. I still need people to help. The ones on the fill I've got with NDOT, we're good there. We got permits and we're, we're ready to do that now. So I've done up and down Central and some other streets. And so anybody got one, please call and we'll. we'll David's we'll, having the police watch him tonight. 
and we're going to have you a list tomorrow. But the right? list, you talk yeah. to your man. We're just trying to get as many of them done as, quick, as fast as we you can. see so. a yellow ribbon on a pole, that means the light's out. That's what we're doing. We're tying that caution ribbon on the pole. Then when we fix it, we take it off. There's still four on Park Road that's out because the timer's out, and we just haven't got them. It not been warm enough to get down our hands and knees and try to fix it. So. Anyway, well, you see a yellow ribbon on the Hill, the street light's been out quite a while. I called Duke on it. Nothing was done. It's in that house that those ladies renovated. Okay, well, I'll, I'll get that with It's Jeff just uh, east of Summit okay. on the south side of the street. You know, there's the people I call is in Plainfield, and that's how I have to go through this to, to get them fixed. So, so far it's working. And the guy that does these in town, he lives down the Triangle, so he's, he's close. <laughs> so he comes and gets me, and sometimes I just take and show him. So. Yeah, that's been up quite a while. It's really dark. They have to have a work area. order, you know. I'm sorry. <laughs> Duke has to have a work order. We can't fix one without a work order. So we get that taken care of. So anybody okay. that has one, please let me know. Utilities. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, um, <coughs> attaches the, my reports, project updates, um, the Third Street water main break at this point. Uh, this cost us about $8,400. Um, that's pretty up to date. Uh, we brought in Alliance. Uh, to check the water leaks around Spartan Bowl. I'm sure you guys heard the news with the Spartan Bowl leaks, but we brought a guy in to check leaks around the building and also we ran the camera through the storm drains. Didn't really find anything. Um, so just check some off the checklist. Um, it, it's going to come down to the bottom of that Spartan Bowl, rip it up, see what's underneath. Um, Brad um, attended and was certified as a construction, construction inspector which will help us out on these construction jobs. We won't have to have an um, engineer inspecting every day. Um, so hopefully that will work, work out this summer for us. The VAC truck bids are due um, March 2nd. And a little update on the service line warranty. Um, we're in the process of creating a letter. Well, I'm not, but the service line people are. And um, here in the next few weeks, the mayor will review it. And the, our goal is the first mailing to the residents will be April 1st as long as uh, Mayor Urban approves the letter. Any questions? Good report, Mike. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We uh, are taking bids at the next Board of Works meeting, and we'll be coming to you once we get that back truck. The bids that came in last time, none of them were acceptable. So we had to rebid it and re redo the whole thing. Uh, it just didn't work out. It wasn't the truck we wanted, and uh, the whole board voted to just start over. <clears throat> so we open the bids at the next meeting. Your Honor, it, yeah. is there any grants on back trucks? No. Okay. Yeah, we're we're going to have to uh, uh, lease purchase it. And this is what twenty five years old. Yeah, twenty five. I think it is. Yes. Okay. It's kind of like a lot of our stuff. <laughs> It's, it's, it's old, but it works sometimes. 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 <laughs> That's the key there. Sometimes. Transfer station. Uh, I don't think he's here tonight. Yeah, he's here. Oh, is he here yeah. tonight? Yeah. You have a report in front of you. you have any questions? I don't have a question, but I have received a call from an individual who wonders why when there's a holiday on Monday, the transfer station closes on Saturday. Uh, what that is, Fran, to do with our contract, when the if there's a holiday on a Friday or a Monday, the transfer station is closed that Saturday. Well, he was concerned because he works out of town and Saturday was the only time he could go. And he just knew the holiday, but he couldn't understand why Saturday. Yeah, that's, that's the reason why. It's just in the contract. Why is it on Saturday? It's been that way for about 14 years. That way it gives the employees the opportunity, like the other departments, to have that weekend off. Yeah, As utilities. We have part-time part -time. people, don't we, that yeah. could work down there, at least one of them. Well, so. that's up to you guys. You control the money. Would the that be a good idea or would it not be a good he idea? He said we wanted to cut back. It doesn't matter to me, as Frank was seeing what I did Monday, like when they ran crash. I, um, Steve and I don't work because we're full-time. So I have one of the part-time guys. Right, every work. time. The so that's, that's up to you up. guys. That's up to you guys. Will they open three, four hours on Saturday? Normally we're open from 8 to noon on Saturdays. And, and how much do they make an hour? 9.05 an hour. 
But holiday would be different, wouldn't it? No, no, no. They're, they're part time employees. Okay. So, they would, so on Saturday, so that's, so that's entirely up. That's we'll up to discuss the, the board of works, okay? If, if they want to do that, that's not a problem. Okay. What do you they think can make it part time or do it. Well, it's just inconvenient, really. I understand. Sure. How many okay. times a year does that happen? I was we, have we, have we have a holiday on Monday and several years. 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 Hi. We had uh, 12 hours, 3 minutes uh, meeting production last month, 7 hours, 59 minutes of original programming, uh, including several basketball games. Uh, one of the uh, new shows that we're actually uh, in production on right now and, and is airing uh, is Hope Happenings uh, from the Hope Center, and uh, they'll be producing a monthly news program letting people know what's going on in the community. And uh, that airs weekdays at 11.30 a.m. and Monday through Wednesday at 10 p.m. Pretty good program. They're doing a good job with it. Any questions? Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Ely, to uh, be on the uh, cable board. Mr. Ely was on the board for a while and he wanted to be off. We didn't have that board filled, so this week I appointed Milk to go back on there. He wanted to go back on there. He, uh, he's got a lot of information and he's, you know, he knows a lot about it, so he's on the cable board. Well, you might make a note in your files that he's on there and we have a full board now. Okay, uh, that concludes. We're back to old business. Anybody got any old business? Any old business? None appearing miscellaneous. What do you have, Tom? I'm good. Thank you. What do you have, uh, Debbie? I just wanted to say congratulations to uh, Brad on his new certification. Thank you. Good job. Gabe? Nothing. Nothing? How's the flowers growing? They're growing. Hard to keep the greenhouse warm? Well, we had a heater go out, but it's fixed now, so. Okay. <coughs> Frank, you got anything on the middle of things? Dr. Weber? I have nothing. Tommy? Mm -hmm. Mr. Baker, you have anything you'd like to say under miscellaneous? No, sir. We're glad you're feeling better. We're glad you're back with us. Thank you. Okay. Bronchitis is hard to shake off, I, uh, as you know. <laughs> but I think I finally got to it. <clears throat> Mayor's update. I don't have much to tell you uh, other than I did appoint uh, Mel Dilley to that board. Um, we get questions every day about SAPA, and I can assure you we have we're up there all the time. Uh, I think uh, I thought Dan was going to be here tonight, but uh, we have I'm sorry, I had him sign things. It's my fault. I take the blame when it's my fault. But I got a next one. We have two or three proposals on the table to help them out and uh, Surely we're going to get one of those things to work out for them. They're landlocked, and we need to get some land up there. Uh, Stance had a real nice, uh, yeah. what do you call that, job fair, yeah. and they hired several people, and they're going to hire a bunch more people. I'm thrilled to death that that's going well. Uh, I've been trying to check with small businesses. Uh, the two new restaurants are doing well. They're pretty busy. And I encourage you, if you haven't eaten there, to try to get in there and eat. Uh, my brother-in-law is uh, expanding his business, b &L Trucking. Uh, he is now carrying the boar's head meat that we missed out on getting the company, but he got the logistics, and uh, he's doing that. Um, all in all, uh, we really have more jobs than we have people to fill them, and yet they say we're the highest unemployment. The companies keep telling me they just can't get people in the high-paying jobs. Well, we'll say they'll live here, and do the job, they'd rather go to Fishers or Pennsylvania or wherever else they want to go. Uh, it's difficult, and we have to make our place friendly. We have to play, make our parks and recreation nice, which Jesse's doing a good job at. Uh, we've got to make it, our school corporation, the best. 
we got to make our hospital the best in order to have people to live here and then we have to get over this uh, media that continually wants to pick on us about uh, heroin deaths or poorest county and remember they said the poorest county in the state they didn't say the poorest city because we're a number what did I tell you 73 out of 104 no we're 45 out of 73 we're not the poorest city we are the poorest county they tell us uh, only in money but yep, as I told you last week or two weeks ago, we have five banks, another one getting ready to build, and three Edward D. Jones offices. And an Edward D. Jones office, in order to be viable, has to have a hundred million dollars in investment. So, put that in your hat. Think about it. We uh, we may be poor, but we have Brian's bookstore where you can go down and get most any problem in the world solved. <laughs> and, uh, uh, we, uh, we have a coffee clutch at Maggie's every morning at 7 o'clock where if you want to know anything about construction, you can probably learn. <laughs> and they tell me there's one over at the McDonald place that uh, I think Ruby's kind of the president of that group. And uh, I don't know what you learn over there. i got to get over there and see. If you, you know, we say women gossip. You come down to Brian's and men hold their own. <laughs> men hold their own, huh? They hold their own. We even got some little old retired ministers that don't think the war between the states is over. <laughs> <laughs> but it will end. We're doing the paper right now, least perspective of Appomattox. When you find out who wins, you tell me. Okay. <laughs> That's it for the mayor's update. Public forum. Anybody in the public out there left? Holly, would you got anything nice to say? Tell us about the how you're doing up there on Friday night. We're doing fantastic. Are you? Honestly, how many people you got going in there? We've been back on a climb. I would say we're probably, we, I mean, we consistently run 50 to 50. I think mean, there are 50 is the safe number, but it, like the last month, we've been sitting in the back half. Did I ever tell you you're doing a good job? Yeah, thanks. Thanks. I, and honestly, I think that even from a, like, a school perspective, not just my, my Haven perspective, like, I think we've done a lot of things to try to, to combat, combat the drug situation in general. Um, one of the things that I'm kind of, and Gabe can speak to is, I started a, a drug support group, hmm. and we had three kids the first, the first meeting, three kids the second meeting, and by the next month we were running thirty. These volunteer kids come in on their own. Who so are we, doing drugs? It's not just not just that they have a drug problem, but their family, somebody they know, oh, wow. it's something that matters to them. And so we, I've been inviting speakers to come in and share and talk to them, and it's all confidential. And um, as a result of that, last night I got to take a family to rehab. So good things are happening. We had more people like you in this world and in this town. This would be a better place to live. We've got Thank lots you. of people. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Rick, for what you're doing. We, we appreciate it. I think I appreciate it so much more today to hear the testimonies I got to hear from the students that are going to attend. Yeah. Okay, uh, public forum. No more public. Thank you. Thank you for supporting this forum. Our, our, our kids really do have to experience good things. I appreciate you supporting that. Uh, I know that we try to invite colleges and other other parts of the world to be there. So I would encourage you guys to come out, be a part of it. Because to be really honest, if you <coughs> want to see what our kids are like and what they're doing, what they're facing, it's an intermingle with them. So it's a perfect opportunity to, to do that, and it's a huge crowd. It's would you say 90% of our kids are good kids? Or would you say 80, 95? What would you say? I don't want to put my name on it. <laughs> I think the mayor, they're all good. They just make bad go. choices. I, I, all, I say all good. Uh, just a few so make bad choices. Bad. Yeah. yeah, some of us make bad choices. Yeah, you're right. I, think. Yeah. I want to tell you something before we quit tonight. I got the gavel. I'm about to bang up the Chop one up the front. Just because he's president of the council. Yeah. I got a letter. I got a letter today, and uh, a very from a very influential pe person in Connors. Well, one that is very well respected among everybody, that had the nicest comments about me personally. I very near cried when I read that letter today. 
you don't get many of those letters. Most of them are bad letters. Um, or someone comes in the office and just cusses us out. But I got one today that was just absolutely wonderful. In fact, I told Melissa we're going to get it framed and hang on the wall. But there's a lot of good people in Connersville, and uh, I think there's a, there's a lot of people working to help others and to love their neighbor and to, to do the right thing. And uh, I wish we could all do that. And I know we all fail. I fail. Everybody fails. But that's what we're working toward. But, uh, I will take a motion Brand, to, go a, ahead. to adjourn before, <laughs> before Mr. I make a motion we adjourn. So, second. Okay, second to the motion. I'd like to hear a little more, actually. <laughs> very very second. Very second. Roll call vote. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Thank you.